lovable children of God. Nice to see you again. It's been a long time, but I'm glad to be back with you today in our fourth week in this series called Your New Playlist, where we're discovering how we can reframe our mindsets, right? And today we're going to talk on the subject of criticism. We're talking naysayers, haters, and that includes yourself too, because sometimes we can be our own worst critic, right? Now you guys will find as you grow and as you live life that as you continue to be humble and as God promised, he exalts you, you're going to find that you're going to have more critics around you, right? People will criticize you for succeeding, for being confident, for taking action, for not taking action. The list goes on and on. So as Christians, it's very important that we understand how to, one, not be a critic ourselves, and how we can handle those and what God does with it, right? Now, my personal testimony is very similar to a Bible character that we're about to discover in our text today. Um, but God definitely took me from a critic to a crusader for the kingdom of God. Um, I remember when I first started diving into my own salvation, right? I had accepted Jesus, but I didn't really have a relationship with him. I hadn't read the Bible. And as it turns out, I was actually at a party and I was debating somebody who was a Christian. I was saying, yeah, I'm a Christian, but they're hypocrites. They don't do what they say. I was really going in on the Christian faith as one myself. And what he told me is that I understand what you're saying to me and I can empathize, but the Bible doesn't say anything that you've understood. And guys, from that moment, becoming a critic, that young man actually discipled me. And now today, you know, I'm the Sunday school teacher, okay? So if anyone understands being a critic and having critics, it's me. Because don't think for a second on my journey as I went from criticizing the faith to teaching in the faith, uh, leading worship, that people weren't skeptical about that either, right? So critics will always be around but they're nothing new to God, just like everything else. And we're going to discover that with the story of Paul. Now, Paul's name used to be Saul, but God changed his name as he changed his heart. Okay. So we're going to do a little reading today. You know, I like the Bible. Don't grow weary, but we are going to read a lot. Okay. So <clears throat> we're going to be in Acts chapter nine and let's start with verses one through nine. And check out the conversion of Saul. And it reads, Now Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked for letters from him to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any belonging to the way, which is Christianity, both men and women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. And as he was traveling, it happened that he approached Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him, and he fell down to the ground and heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? Interesting question when you answer your own question. And he said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting, but get up and enter the city and it will be told to you what you must do. The men who traveled with Paul stood speechless because they heard the, verse, the voice too and they didn't see anyone. Verse eight, Saul got up from the ground and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. And leading him by the hand, they brought him into Damascus. And he was th three days without sight and neither ate nor drank. Now that brings me to my first point, guys. Criticism comes at a cost. Okay? We see pa uh, Saul. He's not Paul yet. Saul is passionate, right? He has passion. It's just misplaced. He used to be a Christian killer. He was against it. Similar to me, right? And Jesus had enough of that criticism. And it cost him because of his criticism or his persecution of the church. God decided to blind him, even though his eyes were open. OK, that's a message to us all. Just because your eyes are open does not mean that you see everything clearly. Only God and the Holy Spirit can help us see in the way that we should. Right. So that's our first point. Criticism comes at a cost. Each and every time. Another biblical example is Zacharias in Luke chapter 1. That is John the, uh, John the Baptist's father. And when the angel came to Zacharias and told Zacharias that he would have a son in his old age, Zacharias rebuttaled that. And because he was a hater towards God's assignment, what did he do, guys? He shut his mouth. There is always a cost to criticism, okay? So we need to remember that as the criti criticizer. And that's Paul in verses 1 through 9. So let's keep going. The story gets good. Verse 10. 
Now there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. And he said, here I am, Lord. <laughs> 11. And the Lord said to him, get up and go to the street called Straight and inquire at the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus named Saul. For he is praying and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come and lay hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I've heard from many about this man, how much harm he did to your saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from chief priests to bind all who call your name. But the Lord said to him, go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the sons of Israel. For I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. So Ananias departed and he entered the house and after laying hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road by which you were coming, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Verse 18. And immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales and he regained his sight and he got up and was baptized and he took food and was strengthened. All right, guys, that's a little shift. Now, notice Paul was the criticizer, and he's turning into the crusader right here. But in our second scripture segment, guys, we have to look at Ananias. Now he is the critic. So my second point is God will choose and use a critic for his goodwill. Where do we find that? Verse 15. When Jesus said, go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to bear my name before Gentiles and kings and the sons of Israel. But I will show him how much he will suffer for my name's sake. So again, we see that the criticism comes at a cost, but God chose Paul specifically as an instrument for his goodwill, guys. Newsflash, we are Gentiles. If you are not of the, Jew the Jewish faith at that time, you weren't considered God's people until Jesus opened the door for that. So Paul would end up leading the crusade to bring us to Christ, right? Super important. He used a critic he chose and used a critic for his goodwill. Number two, God will turn your critics to conduits. Now, conduit is an SAT word that means a means of transmitting or distribution. All right. Y'all heard Ananias when God told him to save Paul. He was like, what? Paul is out here killing your people. That doesn't make sense. He went off on Paul. But what did God do? He used Ananias as a conduit or a means of healing for Paul. So not only can God use you as a critic, he can use the people who are critics against you to not only heal you, but go about his own goodwill. OK, now we're almost done, guys. We're doing a good old job. We're at verse 19, part B, and it says Saul begins to preach Christ. Now, for several days, he was with the disciples who were at Damascus and immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying he is the son of God. All those hearing him continue to be amazed, saying is this not the one in Jerusalem who, uh, who in Jerusalem destroyed those who called his name and who had come here for the purpose of bringing them bound before the priests? But Saul kept increasing in strength and confounding the Jews who lived at Damascus by pro proving that Jesus is the Christ. My God today, not only can God choose and use a critic, guys, he can use your critics as a catalyst. Now, this is very important. And take note. OK, another SAT word. Let me explain catalyst. Catalyst is an agent that speeds thing up, things up. I first learned about it in chemistry in about 10th grade. But if you see this, Paul's haters, again, they're hating on him. Just like me, when I decided I was going to change my life, when I decided I was going to worship the Lord and give myself to him. Surely people that knew me before were like, girl, what? Uh, <laughs> I remember one time someone from college hit me up after church on Sunday and they were like, was that you singing at church on stage all the time? Guys, when you change, when God changes your life, sometimes people won't be able to believe it. They'll be amazed at what you can do, but even still they choose to criticize. And so for that reason, guys, we have to be able to push through the criticism instead of using it as a means of identifying ourselves in an incorrect way. We can use it as encouragement to push through guys. Now, if Paul had let the critics get to him, we wouldn't have 25% of the New Testament. Paul has written so many important things and, and key verses when we think about it. 13 to 14 chapters in the New Testament. A few of his highlights. In Philippians 1.6, God is faithful to complete the work he began. Paul wrote that. 
Don't grow weary in doing good in Galatians. That's Paul, guys. In the book of Romans, God works all things together for our good. Paul is quintessential in our faith and in the Bible. And that's simply because not only was he chose, chosen by God and used by God, he didn't allow the critics to stop him from where he needed to go. So let me recap that again, guys. Criticism comes at a cost. As Christians, we need to be known by our love and lead with grace. So if you're the critic in this situation, you need to reconsider. All right. Number two, God will choose and use a critic for his goodwill. Even if you are the critic, even if you have critics, God will still choose you and God can still use you. All you have to do is submit to him and yield to the Holy Spirit, guys. Number three, God will turn your critics into conduits. Don't let the haters keep you down. God can change hearts and he is the master chess maker making all the plays. No one is exempt. Even unbelievers can be used by God, okay? And finally, God can use your critics as a catalyst. Don't let what people say about you that is critical change your beliefs in God or what you think you can do, okay? So as an application, guys, we're going to pray on this. So my first question to you, where are you a critic in your life? Where have you criticized someone? Where have you been sowing a negative seed instead of encouraging people to good works like Hebrews 10, 24, and 25 tells us, okay? So if that's you, and it's been all of us at one time, the action item is to pray for forgiveness and repent. Why? Because criticism comes at a cost. We don't want a punishment, right? Even if we deserve it, God is faithful to apply grace and mercy to us. If we'll pray and he's faithful to forgive us of our sins, that's in 1 John, okay? Number two, who are the critics in your life? Analyze that. Think about it for a second. And when you think about those, pray to God that he would use them as a conduit or a catalyst in your life. There's nothing that God can't do. And he can change people's hearts. And not only will they be a conduit or a catalyst, but they will also be amazed at the change that God has made in you. All right. And I'm going to leave you guys with a quote. Aristotle said to avoid criticism, say nothing, do nothing and be nothing. Now, we will not be doing any of that. But it reminds us that regardless of the situation, there's going to be criticism. And we can choose to use that or we can choose to let it take us down. All right. But we're going to use it for God's good works. And we are going to choose to be used by God and have those critics become a catalyst instead. Let's pray. God, thank you for today. And thank you for the opportunity to be used in any situation, Father. I pray that in areas that we are critical, that you would give us eyes to see whoever we are criticizing the way you see them, God. Forgive us for that. Help us to repent and turn from that and show love instead of show hate, God. And for those who are critics in our life, God, we pray, forgive them for they know not what they do. Help us to stand in the foundation of your identity for us. Help us to walk forward trusting and knowing that no weapon formed against us will prosper and you're faithful to complete the work that you began. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen.